Thanks, Paul. And I'm, I'm off mute, hopefully. Can you, you are me? off mute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, I work with Scott, who's on the call. We used to work for a company called Dr. Foster. Um, I now work in the NHS, where I'm the chief analytical officer for a big trust, East Kent Hospitals, which is the sixth biggest trust in the country. Um, I'm also the chair of the analytics board for Kent Medway, which is basically the kind of a, an attempt at a gang of analysts for a region, but at a decent senior level. Um, there's a load of stuff going on. <clears throat> um, as you can imagine, it's it's fairly chaotic. I mean, I'm I've got about 100 staff, and I'm kind of redeploying myself and some of them to frontline giving out um, PPE. Um, but in the meantime, we're getting asked daily for different sets of data from the center. And of course, it's none of it's coordinated. That would be far too straightforward. So we've got um, Public Health England wants something. NHS England wants something different. The local CCG wants something different again. And those change almost every day. Um, so they're now trying to bring in um, medically fit for discharge, MFFD, um, detox, delayed transfers of care. Because the, the thing that people are starting to worry about over the last day or two is it's good that some of these people are being discharged, um, but are, is there enough support in the community to kind of look after them? <clears throat> um, so uh, the, our daily world is very chaotic and getting asked for lots of different data sets from lots of different places. What I've started to do this week is to try and align all of the NHS organisations across Kent and Medway to create one linked data set that should service a lot of these stupid daily sit reps that we have to do um, and actually becomes available for modelling then as well. So if we can create a pseudonymized patient level data set, we've actually got a lot of actuaries that have put their hands up to say they'll help us with some modelling. Um, as long as we can agree a data set and agree how to record uh, different types of oxygen, different types of ventilation, um, and so on. So it's, it's really fast moving, it's quite exciting. Um, the data is quite scary. Um, I can show a couple of things on screen if you want, Paul. How long do you want before? I don't want to go for two. No, you've got another, um, I think, another uh, 300 seconds. Right, okay. So I'll just show you a couple of things really quick. <clears throat> So this is an attempt to, and excuse the clunky acronym, but this is an attempt to link all of the data together. So if I come to, are you, are you getting my screen moving? Have you got the yep. cross? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we've got that, we've got, you've got a cross. Yeah. yeah, okay. So if you imagine here, this is me in a queue on the left. I don't know if you get my mouse as well. Yep. Um, a lot of people talk about linked data sets, but it's at a very high level, kind of sus, HES type data. Uh, that, which is broadly when you came in, when you went home, and roughly what we did to you. It doesn't include all the clinical data below that. Um, and then the attempt is to link, as you go um, horizontally across the top of this matrix, to linking data from all sorts of other people. Um, and to your points about geography, what the councils are worried about is trying to get all these social carers organised. So CCG boundaries and things like that aren't particularly helpful to them when they're trying to deploy staff to go and help people at home. Um, we're now sharing data each day with the Ambulance Trust, uh, with the Community Trust, on any patients that have tested positive. Uh, we've got an interesting IG issue at the moment where we're starting to want to count and analyse staff, NHS staff who've come in, and that takes you into kind of quite sensitive area um, with IG, which we're looking at at the moment. That's the sort of current challenge for us. Um, we are also, <clears throat> can you see that? This is our kind of smarties. And uh, um, I'll, I'll, go, I'll kind of look, just look at this quickly because it's this is real data. Um, this is the amount of oxygen we've got on different sites. So these, these are three sites. Oh, we're, we're seeing just the PowerPoint at the moment. You might, okay, have, to right. you might have to choose a different a screen. Yeah. Choose your window, yeah. Yeah, your window. yeah. Okay, sorry. So that one. Yes. Okay, so these are our uh, three main sites, uh, Canterbury, uh, Margate and Ashford. Um, these are our numbers of cases. You can start to see down the left the types of measures that we are counting. Um, we're starting, and it's really difficult, starting to try and count the amount of oxygen we've got, different types of oxygen that's available in different places. Um, 
the other thing we've got is <clears throat> some analysis. So you've got a website now, a COVID-19 yeah. website. Okay, so this is some analysis. We're basically trying to do um, bottom up and top down. So we're looking at sort of international data, um, looking at what, what sort of assumptions we might make and then trying to model that down using these actuaries down into Kent to look at different levels of compliance, um, different levels of demand for oxygen and ventilation, um, and then starting to plot some of these graphs looking at sort of numbers of deaths compared to the demand that we've got. As you can imagine down in Kent, we the politics around this are, should we build a military hospital Nightingale at Detling Showground, or should we push patients up into London? And I think there's a risk politically that Nightingale in London becomes a white elephant. Um, and I suspect that some patients will get pushed north towards it. Um, although what we're seeing in Kent is the north of Kent, just because it's closest to London, probably at Dartford, starting to fill up more quickly um, with COVID patients. So they, some of those may get decanted south to us and some may go up to Nightingale. But this data is so important, as, as Paul's religion is, because it will feed the modelling about if we put a new military hospital up, how many beds we'll put in it, what type of ventilation we'll be putting in it. And people are not used to sharing data and working collaboratively in, uh, on this. I'll stop there, Paul, because that feels like about the five minutes.